Alright, what the fuck is up, Kyle? That's an old Vine reference. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's always in the forefront of my mind. Ah, hello and welcome to Bushcraft Bullshit episode... 8, I think? For those who have been here before, welcome back. Glad you could join me again for some bullshit. For the new ones, hello, this is the Bushcraft Bullshit series in the Bushcraft Bullshit Clubhouse, also known as the BBC. They still haven't written me a letter saying to stop, so we're gonna keep it going. This is episode 8 of Bushcraft Bullshit, and it is a series where I take a look at a rampant copy culture going on in the outdoor bushcraft survival hiking community. Because I think there's a lot of bad advice, bad content shitty behavior and an overall very sketchy culture on how to treat a community of outdoor enthusiasts and how content is treated so a recap of what i think i have nothing against copying just make it your own and give credit where credit is due i'm just sick of seeing everyone copying the bigger pages who think of a hack and then you can see it just gets watered down as it trickles along the pages and shorts and reels and videos and what we are left with is a pile of shit really pile of shit it fucking sucks i brought my computer today because i have a lot of notes we have a lot of stuff to go through we're going to talk about negativity bias rage bait engagement tactics these pages use to get you to comment and like and share and get their content sent out via the algorithm they use some pretty sneaky shitty tactics i'm sick of it we're gonna kind of take a look at that. And of course, we're gonna review some videos, I think, uh, copy pasted bullshit. So, welcome. I have Earl Grey in my cup and some whiskey right here. So, let's get going. So, what is the negativity bias? Well, it's a cognitive bias that apparently we are born with. That cognitive bias shows itself in form of a pattern. We are more likely to engage and focus on negative things like interactions, impressions, negative impressions in general. We all know negativity draws a lot of attention, but to actually know about it and to know that you are born with it and that your brain seeks out negative impressions more than positive impressions. You're born with a more pronounced focus towards the negative. And what does that mean? Some smarty pants scientists have conducted some studies and it shows that a baby is more likely to look at a person frowning than a person smiling and that they will look at the person frowning for a longer duration of time than they would look at a happy person. So that's kind of the negativity bias boiled down. We focus a lot on the negative. So what does that mean in the context of social media? Any attention is good attention, apparently. I don't believe in that. To take this negativity bias and try to translate it into something we can recognize and use in social media, we have rage bait. Now there's all kinds of rage bait. The internet is flooded with rage bait and people do this intentionally, you know, because it's fucking bait. Well, the purpose of the bait is to get you to comment your negative thoughts. Comment why you think that is bad, poorly done, or just morally wrong. And it really doesn't matter what you comment, if it's good, if it's negative, as long as you comment and get people to engage with it, maybe send it to their friends. The algorithm does not know the difference between good and bad engagement. It just knows that this content is popular for whatever reason. Well, popular. It just knows that the content gets engagement for whatever reason that is, and that pushes it through the social media channels, and it gets more attention and more attention. And that just means that the people who produce this content, maybe by accident the first time, will continue to follow this pattern of rage baiting, negativity, and just poor content. So that's what the negativity bias can kind of be translated into in a very simple way into social media. An example of rage bait may be a artist coloring in the lines. And when they color, like they're showing a satisfying video of a coloring book and they're coloring in the shapes and sizes, and they just miss by a fraction of an inch and people go absolutely fucking crazy because that's not satisfying to see a color being drawn outside a line so they comment and that just skyrockets the video into famous infamy status i guess but also deliberately pranking and annoying unsuspecting people one of the more recent examples i saw 
which actually really pissed me off. <laughs> the negativity bias is strong, but it was just a attractive woman sitting in her car. The caption on the screen said, single woman here, just a simple hello would make my day. And there were like 13,000 comments, the negative comments. If a guy wrote that, oh, he would be downvoted to oblivion. And, and it is pure rage bait. It is pure rage bait. Narcissistic, obvious bullcrap she has written. Either get all the fucking lonely guys to say, oh, hello, beautiful, or to enrage other women and men in like, why are you doing this? But it doesn't matter. They are feeding into the rage bait and makes the video popular. There's a lot of examples of this, but in our context today, we are gonna look at some videos. We are gonna try to figure out if it is just passionate creators creating this content. Is it incompetence, stupidity? Do they not know any better? Or is it a deliberate tactic for engagement? Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Before we begin with the new videos, this video I did last time of a girl trying to filter out salt water, or so I thought, I got a comment saying, well, maybe it's one of the big lakes in the United States. And I checked that channel is from the United States, or so it says. So it could well have been a huge freshwater lake. Fair enough. It could possibly be a lake shore. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. But I gotta add, still, that filter does not filter out living organisms. You have to boil that shit for about three to five minutes just to kill all the parasites and other living organisms. Sure, it's a freshwater lake. It's still shit because she doesn't boil it. That can be dangerous. That is not good advice to show. Video belongs in the trash can and that is where it stays, regardless of if it was fresh water or salt water. Let's move on to some stronger stuff, eh? So negativity bias, rage bait, and let's get some videos going. First video here is just an example of copying a girl takes a branch, she smells it, she splits it, quarters it, puts sticks in between, sets it on fire, she has a torch. She cannot blow it out. Now, let's see another video. Now, believe it or not, this is a different girl. She takes off a branch, smells it, apparently it smells good. She quarters it, puts sticks in between it, sets it on fire, tries to blow it out. It cannot be blown out, apparently. Two videos. Very similar. Different creators. Blatant copies. Let's see the original. It is, of course, our well-known bushcraft girl. She cuts off a branch, smells it, and she quarters it, puts sticks in between the quartered parts, sets it on fire, and it is again hard to blow out. The first two videos copied this one, and she was the first to post it. Not the first to do this survival hack or bushcraft hack, but she was the first to do it in that style and the others copied. Now, did you notice something? Now this third creator here, we just saw the original poster, she cuts off a branch from a fir tree. The branch is saturated with resin. That's why it's all red, fat wood. And it smells amazing. Now fat wood contains the same chemical compounds as turpentine. It's very flammable, it smells very good. It's addictive. I have a problem. It's very flammable. So it's ideal to make a torch out of. The other two copycats, they were in a forest of beech. Not a coniferous forest, not branches that collects fatwood. Fatwood doesn't pool in those branches, but they still smell it. Just like she did, but there is no smell. Maybe apart from an earthy, woody smell. Isn't that just brain damage inducing? They don't know what they're doing. So this is what I'm talking about, content being watered down. This is a example I've covered before in one of my bushcraft bullshit shorts on my YouTube and Instagram. It's a very good example of creators just copying without knowing diddly shit, diddly doodly squat about what the f they are talking about. That is insane to me. I do not think they did this on purpose, that they are trying to provoke uh, negativity bias in a kind of rage bait form. I don't think they know. They just copy what they see it is sad so to these creators cheers but you done fucked up uh, you're a smooth tennessee whiskey his whiskey is almost as smooth as those creators brains 
not quite as smooth but almost let's look at another video that is incompetence but in my opinion deliberate incompetence now i have covered her before in one of my shorts but she's just a prime example of what i think is deliberate incompetence to um not to say this in a good way but show off her lady parts and maybe some rage bait she is making a primitive x she is batoning with a stone oh god damn and she is just wedging a completely useless triangle rock into a stick tying it with a completely useless knot and then just throwing it into the distance it, it is um it is truly mind-boggling how bad this video is first of all batoning on the back of the knife you are destroying your knife that is not how you fasten a rock to a piece of wood check out this guy very skilled um, very well-known guy but he's the reference i use when i watch this video hell yeah hun get your tits out <laughs> but if the nips are showing it's not a survival hack worth knowing and i stand by that and this is a prime example of jiggling lady parts paired with complete incompetence and a lot of self-awareness and a bit of rage bait this video is from another big site 600,000 subs and i included this video because it is it's just exploiting the girls does bushcraft and it has a lot of revealing shots in it mainly i included it because it is just poorly made it is lowest tier of content just um take a look okay she's showing some rope she's showing some pretty useless nameless knots she of course has a disposable knife some more useless knots completely stupid to focus on that that's not the whole focus the she just puts out a blanket two pillows only uses one pillow and she's just having a hell of a time apparently under that whimsical blanket yeah huh get your tits out <laughs> fuck why is that so funny it is it is just poorly made this video the focus on the knots the obvious placement of everything that has to do with her i think it is just um yeah no and this is a a big survival bushcraft diy channel this is just lazy low tier content even for them and it's it just feels like a filler so what, what was the point of me jesus so what was the point of me including this video i just thought it was shit and i won't stand for it <laughs> but let's move on to some more relevant now we get into some of the meat and potatoes of this video. The engagement tactics, still copying some of the negativity bias, aka the rage bait. This big well-known creator is showing us how to split wood when you don't have, when you only have a knife that doesn't baton. So first he makes a little split and then he makes a peg out of a you know harder fresh stick so he can wedge that in his stump and split the wood completely fine i don't like this style of content but at least this dude is trying some new things and he is actually one of the creators in the forefront that everyone else kind of copies so even though i think this style is overdone and some of the hacks are pretty useless points to this guy for creativity and actually being one of the guys who think of new things. We of course have bigger creators and smaller creators copying. This guy finds a pair of scissors apparently and he does the exact same thing just with a pair of scissors. Makes a tiny split to start with, use the scissors to make a wedge out of another stick and then he splits the wood with that wedge he has just made. Now the other guy uploaded it first and now this guy is just uh, blatantly copying. So what's interesting about this is people are calling him out in the comments. Some comments are saying, I've seen this before last week from this and this page. He's like, yeah, but everything has been done for many, many years and blah, blah, blah. And nothing is new, but it's pretty funny that you chose to post this just a week after someone else posted it. And that's just copying, not giving credit. That's kind of what's wrong with this culture. It's just copying with no actual respect for the source material or respect for the audience they can see you copying and copying is fine make it your own put your own spin on it but you can't tell me this culture is filled with passionate creators i don't think you have the right to call yourself 
a passionate bushcraft or outdoor survivalist if all you do is copy and techniques used before sure nothing is original but god damn it make your own content contribute something to this community that is not just copy paste be passionate about other things than just copying and engagement so this kind of just pisses me off a bit but that's what they want rage bait but i am saving my rage for these videos and not your goddamn comment section so shove it i was a bit harsh wasn't it gels <sighs> i'm gonna need one more forgot to use the knife today boop oh fuck i hit a nail god damn it okay it wasn't that bad oh jesus fuck why is this so hard that's what she's saying now this guy who just copied did it with the scissors he has uh kind of just uh, lately changed his tactics how he engages with his community or people who comment why has he done that because his engagement is down his page is not growing as he wants it to so he is engaging in these tactics these tactics are on this video with the scissors and some other videos but it's recent it's within the last two or three weeks he's begun to do it so what are the tactics if the comment is negative he wants them to elaborate on why and if the comment is positive or negative he usually asks them a question a question he asks a lot is what do you like about camping what do you like about being outdoors and of course you should engage with your audience and your comments because that's what the comment section is there for if you don't want people to comment turn off the goddamn comment section but to ask what do you enjoy about camping or anything like that just like a goddamn robot on every single person who says something negative or positive what is the point the point he wants it to be is that he wants an answer he wants engagement your question and interaction just loses all credibility and all authenticity when you just ask the same question over and over again and the people in the comments are nice enough to answer but if it's a negative comment he answers why and then he gets them to answer maybe again maybe again maybe again just to boost engagement boosting comments just trying to send it into the sphere where it gets blown up by the algorithm it's blatant tactics then we get to one of these videos now he's done this kind of rope video before it was where he was on a stump tied to a tree my last video actually i think and people were like what the fuck is this why is there a stump there why is there a machete there why are you tied to a tree this way and not the other way and so he just kind of remade the video and in my opinion just made it even more obnoxious so he's tied to a rope in this useless fucking way and he does that fucking macgyver trick and he uses <clears throat> his boots to wrap around the string he had around the tree and then he wants to cut himself loose so yeah friction breaks the rope and this is freeze frame right there let's see that again and one of the comments said he's looking at the camera like he did something <laughs> and, I, and that was exactly my thought he gave us this pulled off something magnificent I, I actually just noticed this so he took the whole the rope that was tied around the tree he took that off with him he tied it around his boots like this but it wasn't tied in a knot was it it wasn't tied in a loop he could get free couldn't he the ends of that rope weren't tied together were they nope you can see that piece of rope trailing without anything attached to it so instead of just untying these loosely fucking fitted knots he could probably just you know j jiggle them loose but instead he took the rope off of the tree that was not tied together and then he sawed the piece of rope with the other piece of rope and yeah sure he is showing us that you can actually break rope with another piece of rope first of all start from the beginning why are you tied in the woods is anything can happen in the woods no 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 no. yeah sure you can get kidnapped get fucked up in the woods but a, a person wanting to hurt you in the woods are not gonna tie you up this way so if you think that someone that wants to hurt you in the woods is gonna tie you up this way to a tree you are dumb <laughs> i was 
this is stupid. You know, the knots were so loosely fitting that you could probably jimmy out or just reach over and untie the orange piece from your other wrist and then reach over again and tie, untie it from the other. And then you have the audacity to look at the camera the way you do. This is kind of what I was talking about with the negativity bias and rage bait because people are obviously clowning on this reel. And to the people who hasn't, he have, have a negative comment, he asks why, so they will answer again. And to a people who have a positive comment, he will ask, well, what do you like about camping? The tactics are obvious, and here you can see it, in my opinion, mixed with kind of a soft rage bait, you know? Um, he knows what he's doing. He's done this type of video before, and it got a lot of engagement. So I think he's doing the same thing again. It's just an assumption, but I think it's a fair assumption to make. Where's the line? We looked at a lot of different videos. What is incompetence? What is passionate creators like the creative guy with the Swiss army knife just showing us how to split wood? And, and what is just pure rage bait? It's hard to say, but the bushcraft pages with the girls are, are pretty obvious. They're using what God gave them. And you know what? I respect the grind. Maintaining a, a channel is is work and they are using What they can to you know create engagement. I can't really I can't really be mad at that Unless they actually present something that's completely shit which they do from time to time And I think that is a shitty way to conduct a page that is supposedly about Education survival and bushcraft and outdoor and DIY. It's hard to differentiate Passion, incompetence, rage bait, and just plain old nipples. But god damn it, I think it's a it's a bunch of bullshit. The tactics are obvious, and I'm sick of it. I can only compare these things to myself and what I would do, and to a certain point, what comments and feedback I get from you. And I gather a lot of you are tired of these blatant, obvious tactics too. From the nipples, to the rage bait, to the comments that hopefully for them will boost their content through the algorithm it's all tactics it's all shady it's all in my opinion anti-community and through all this shit and through all your comments and feedback i i gather there is a kind of hopefully there will be some kind of shift like let's get back to basics try to leave some of these gimmicks behind because it is, it is rage bait, it is annoying to look at, and it is dumbing down this outdoor niche, and they do not care. Don't leave comments, don't give them hate, you're not going to get anything out of it. You want to hear your rational thoughts through their mouths, but they won't give you that. They know what they're doing, and they will just dance around all your questions, so don't engage with them, that's my advice. Because you want to hear reason. They know what they're doing. They do not care about your point of view. It's a business. They have something to uphold. The easiest way to do it is with social media bullshit gimmicks. You will not get any satisfaction from them asking your questions, your point of view. Fuck those tactics and fuck that culture. Lastly, I want to highlight some positive things. This guy, Danish guy, simple woodsman on Instagram. Holy shit. Please check him out. Primitive skills, proper bushcraft, advice, quality content. An argument can be made that they do, they do not speak English. A lot of them are from Russia or the Middle East. There is a lot of ways to make content that do not rely on language. And language obviously can be a barrier. I'm sitting from a privileged standpoint. I do know my way around languages, some. But in my opinion, copying, making shitty moral decisions and shitty content shouldn't be boiled down to a language barrier. It's de deliberate choices, deliberate tactics. I can understand why people will cultivate a following this way because it's a way out. It's a way to get new opportunities in life when the pages get as big as these do. So I understand it, but I do not respect the tactics. And there's a difference. So language barrier or not, moral content creation shouldn't be defined to what language you speak. That was it, I think. I hope you enjoyed it. 
There's a lot of rants. The whiskey's doing some of the ranting. I can feel it. But uh, thank you for joining me at the BBC, the Bushcraft Bullshit Clubhouse. This has been episode eight. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy your interactions. This has been a broadcast from the BBC.